Okay, um, the title has changed a bit because like, uh, since I submitted this talk, the thing has evolved a bit. It's uh, much worse than I originally thought. Um, okay, um, in summer I, I saw this blog post from Franz Rosen. Uh, he found a cross-site scripting in connection with the ACME protocol. ACME is the thing that Labs Encrypt is using to verify if a domain is yours and then you can get a TLS certificate for it. And um, one part of the ACME protocol is that uh, Let's Encrypt will fetch this URL from your server, uh, which is uh, under some defined uh, path. It's dot well known ACME challenge, and then there's some token, which is, uh, I think it's a hash of a public key. Doesn't matter for the attack. And the response is the same token plus another token. So, you might think, okay, maybe this uh, looks like cross-site scripting, and it's... So there are some implementations of that that just reflect this first token. And, like, if you reflect content, that's a classic reflected XSS vulnerability, right? But it's only an XSS vulnerability if the browser will actually render HTML out of that. If it's just a text file, then it's not. And the browser decides based on the MIME type, which is a HTTP header. Um, and this blog post here says, uh, however, there's an old mod to Apache called Magic Mime that tries to figure out the content type depending on the first bytes of the response. For example, B would lead to content type text HTML. Okay, uh, and I thought, okay, what? Uh, really, that's what Apache is doing? And I tested, yeah, it's really, and um, this, does, this sounds bad. And, it, I, I, and I thought, no, it's not just this vulnerability, like there are more problems behind this. Uh, so yeah, Apache Mod My Magic, it's a module to enable cross-site scripting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> basically, um, that's what the documentation says. So this module determines the MIME type of files of the same way the Unix file command works. It looks at the first bytes of the file. Okay, if you know file, like it had a few memory corruptions in the past, I mean, they're using an old fork of file. Um, maybe you think fuzzing or something, I thought the same. It's not so easy to do fuzzing here. I didn't find anything, but this, there's definitely potential here. But um, what does this module mean? So um, if, if you have a file on a web server and the file extension is in the MIME types configuration file, then it will determine the MIME type based on that. If not, it will try to guess the MIME type based on the content of the file. And what does that mean? That essentially means if you have any web application that allows uploading and downloading files uh, with an unusual extension, that is not in MIME types, then you will have cross-site scripting. I found multiple examples, um, will be disclosed at some point. Um, so, but just imagine we have a forum of people who love C64 music, and then they allow uploading SID files, which is a very unusual file format, but okay, why not? Uh, but then they will, almost automatically have cross-site scripting if it's hosted on Apache with this module because SID uh, uh, files will probably not be in the MIME types and then it will guess the file type and then you upload something which has a extension .sid, but it contains HTML and the server will guess the MIME type. Okay, uh, yeah, that's what I just said. Um, so, okay, so you may wonder, can we just disable this module? Um, yeah, we can if we're the server administrator, but if we're at shared, on shared hosting providers, no, because there's no option to disable it for a directory or just a single host. You can just disable it on the whole server. Okay. But if we disable it, then we're good. Right? That's what I thought, and that, that's where I submitted this talk. Um, but then, I mean, there's also a browser, right? And the browser can also guess MIME types. <laughs> so if you send a file without a MIME type, which is what Apache is doing if, if it cannot determine the MIME type in any case, then the browser will guess the MIME type. Um, and if it's HTML, it will render it. Um, so yeah. Um, so some of you might say, yeah, but there's this header, x content type options, no sniff, and 
Like there are some web pages that test your web page for how secure it is and they always tell you to set this header. So you set this header and then you're secure because this disables mime sniffing, right? Who thinks that? Yeah, now you're scared. <laughs> so, yeah, so we can disable mime sniffing in the browser with this header as a web page. That's what I thought. Um, but I have to tell you, um, X content app options no sniff is a lie. I, I sent this header and uh, without a mime type and it's executing CC. Um, so it depends on the browser. So Chrome does the right thing, Safari also does the right thing, but uh, Firefox and Edge will still render HTML with X content type options no sniff. The somewhat it has historical reasons. So the reason is Microsoft invented this header and they intended it for people serving JavaScript without a JavaScript MIME type and that would lead to XSS. And they didn't really think about this HTML for XSS. So if you look up what X content type of snow sniff, for example, in Mozilla Developer Network, it says, yeah, this will disable MIME sniffing. Oh, by the way, it only disables MIME sniffing for JavaScript and CSS files and uh, yeah. So that doesn't help, at least not in half of the browsers. Uh, what could web applications do? So you might think, okay, then, then you only allow file extensions that are uh, listed in ECC MIME types because um, otherwise uh, there's this guessing going on. Um, it, it's a bit difficult because every Linux distribution has their own version of ETC MIME types. Like there's zero standardization. So you could say, okay, I'll only um, allow the ones that are listed in every Linux distribution's MIME types, but um, yeah, it gets messy. Um, what could a server administrator do? So you might think um, we could always send a MIME type. Like let's say if we cannot figure out the MIME type, then we send something safe like text plane or application octet stream, which will not render HTML. Okay. Um, Apache has this configuration option default type. Well, it, it had this configuration option. They removed it. So why? Um, I thought myself, like, this doesn't make any sense. Then I asked them, why did you remove that? I mean, this would mitigate a vulnerability. I want to recommend to set this option. There's a standard called uh, authoritative metadata from the W3C. Uh, it's a standard to enable cross-site scripting. <laughs> and this standard says you should not do that. It says, um, it's good practice that server software designers should not specify default representation metadata such as media type, character encoding, or content language. Um, and it also says good practice server managers, webmasters should not specify an arbitrary media type, for example, text plane or application octet stream when the media type is unknown. So we could mitigate it with that, but this standard tells us we're not allowed to, or it's at least not good practice. Um, I mean, software doesn't follow, have to follow stupid standards, like NGINX just sends application octet stream by default, which I think is a good thing, but yeah. Okay, um, so, conclusions. Uh, MIME sniffing, both on the server and on the client side, can easily lead to cross-site scripting. Um, disable mod MIME magic if you use Apache. Like, it's inherently bad. Like, it's messy C code, which is parsing binary data with code that probably no one has ever reviewed, and it leads to cross-site scripting. Um, I don't, there seems to be no easy way for a web application developer to avoid these issues. Like, you could try to force the MIME driver, but it's all not really nice. I mean, I, I had a bit of the problem. I reported this to web applications, and then they said, yeah, what should we do? And I said, yeah, I don't know. I, it's bad. <laughs> um, X content type option snow sniff doesn't help in half of the browsers. I hope Firefox will fix it. It sounded like they might. Um, yeah. Um, W3C standards tell us we're not allowed to mitigate this issue on the server side. And yeah, this is a big mess. And uh, I gave this talk here because I hope that some web security people will later 
talk to me and give me some ideas, like what should we do about this? Are there more issues like that? And yeah. Okay, thanks. Ja, hallo, vielen Dank. Wir haben Zeit für eine Frage. Wir sind etwas fünf Minuten über die Zeit und gehen danach auch fünf Minuten später wieder aus der Kaffeepause raus. Aber eine Frage. Uh, have you tried to adding um, a second header or the content type? Just adding the application octet stream every time. So and it might be the last header. So it may be the case that the vulnerable browsers are not vulnerable anymore. So, so what's your idea here? That you just use it? Using the add header directive of Apache to yeah. just add every time application octet stream, then you have two content type headers. Okay, for no, I'm not sure what happens when you send the header twice. But Me neither, it but it sounds like a nice solution. I mean, hey. <laughs> I mean, the other thing is like we do, um, the, these directives in HD access, you cannot really rely that you can use that. That's another problem with, yeah. You can add it globally. I really hope that uh, content sniffing is dead since. EA version 7, but obviously uh, no, no. it lives, uh, <laughs> it lives uh, on. <laughs> but maybe I one could write a machine learning model to write the right content, a uh, mime type. I have a very quick comment. I think setting the, setting the content type header will not help you because um, a lot of things in the browser just ignore the content type that is set by the server. So for example, if you have plugins or, or like PDFs or Flash applets, they will ignore it. So I think the only advice that really works in this case is don't allow file upload on your origins that you care about. So put, <laughs> but no, but I'm, but I'm not joking. But this is not feasible for l you, something like WordPress. You need, a separate, you need a separate origin and that's the only way you can really solve this. Um, you need two origins, one for file I, uploads, one I'd for I'd love to discuss this later with you, but uh, I, I think this is not feasible in many situations. But there's no other way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Hanno. Coffee break.